Hey, welcome back everyone. Today I'm in the Berkeley Hills at a park called Tilden Park. And it's a really cool little uh, small steam train ride they have up here that I used to bring my kids to and I thought I'd go ride it today and film it. Um, I've always been a steam train guy so it's actually really cool. It goes through the redwoods. So it's a little miniature steam train. So let's go check that out. And um, if you guys like what I'm doing, can you um, please subscribe to your, my channel and share my channel with your friends so my channel can grow. I'd really appreciate that. All right, let's go check out the steam train ride. So here's the schedule for the train. You can hear it in the distance. And then they have over here, they have an engine house for the trains that they're not running or they're working on. Which is pretty neat. Check this out. They actually have a real roundhouse out there too. These are the other engines that they're working on. They're all like works of art. I don't know what scale they are. But they're a lot smaller than a real one. And here they got some um, diagrams of the different locomotives, uh, kind of uh, architectural drawings, various articles. And you can hear the train. You better get out there. And here is the actual, they have a real roundhouse that spins and they can adjust where they want the trains to go for the night for storage. You can hear it chugging. Oh, it's coming this way. It's doing a loop. Come on, Jimmy. It's about to come around and park. And I better go get a ticket. But I want to film it coming around. Here it comes. Quiet little train, huh? As you can see, it's like a uh, tiny scale. They even have a little caboose in the back. So, I better go get a ticket so I can film this thing and get on board. How you doing? Alright, that's the call, huh? I guess we will ride in the back. Dana, these will definitely date the picture. And the next time, I'm going to ride it twice. I'll we'll ride in the front. So it's got a little caboose back here, a little cattle car. I like that car. A tiny little caboose. Guess you can't ride that. I think they let you in there. <laughs> you just hop on in. This should be a little fun ride through the redwood forest here. I um, started liking trains when I was six. I lived in a town called Capitola. And uh, there was a freight train that came through the town. The town lived, the town was built 
or a trestle was built through the town. And I used to hear that train coming and my ritual was to get out of bed when I heard the whistle, get on my bicycle and ride down and watch the train. That's kind of started my love affair of trains and ever since then I've liked trains. And I can't explain why, but I know a lot of other people um, like them too. That's why I like trains. <laughs> So let's go enjoy this ride. And down there is a smaller gauge. And uh, train enthusiasts come on certain weekends um, and set up their trains. And, and you can watch them, and then you can actually ride them. They're really tiny, though. You see the tracks when we go by. Now, with COVID, I don't know if that's going on at all. But I've been here when that happens, and it's pretty fun, too. You can see they got miniature towns they're building over there. small the train tracks are but they do give people rides and they're rebuilding it uh, last time I was here they were doing a bunch of construction there's trestle water tower So if you're in the Bay Area and you're a train lover like me, you should definitely come and check this out. And if you have kids, this is a must. Kids love it. You see they're building more like a, a trestle over there for the smaller gauge. Tiny little gauge. Got some houses they're building there. This park's really nice. It goes through the forest. Scenery. I mean, where else can you ride a miniature train to the Redwoods for three dollars and fifty cents? I don't know anywhere. Where we 
come around doing a big loop now. Fun, fun, fun. There's a great view up here coming. East Bay Hills. Pretty small, really small. Another one. Coming back into the station, we we'll do a little loop here. And you can see again the train yard where the other trains run on, the we on some weekends with COVID and everything. I don't know if they do that anymore. This is the trestle. And here we are back in another group of people waiting to get on board. We're going to do a loop and then come back into the station. And coming around the corner. Back into the station. So I'm gonna ride it again, but this time I'm gonna ride up front and get more engine action. They have this little cattle car here you can sit in. All the other cars are outdoor cars. I'm gonna go and film it, the train going over the trestle. 
and I'll ride the next one. So here's the prices too. What a deal. It's a good deal for sure. And they got these uh, t-shirts you can get. And posters and trinkets. Oh, yeah. Good. You like that shirt? <laughs> yeah. Remember we had these. You know that train? The Durango and Silver Train? A new book. Oh, that one's incredible. Yeah, I like yeah, this poster. Incredible. Oh, I can see the pool right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just up there. I didn't ride the train, but I got the shirt. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, that's... So here's the train. How's she running? Good? Yeah, it is, it is. But? <laughs> Something wrong? No. Oh, no, the pump's being finicky. Oh. Uh, so, do you rotate the engines? I saw the other ones in the house back there. Yeah, so I ran the engine yesterday, I ran the 11. Okay. And then today's engineer shows the 5. Got it. There we go. That's awesome. So, they all work. Oh, yeah. Uh, the only engine's not running right now is the 4. We're rebuilding the tender. Awesome. Yeah, Great. Six, oh, going on 50 years old. You probably need a new tender. Yeah. There's all the controls. Yeah, the four was built in 1965. That's the year I was born. <laughs> well, in those days, we hauled about 50 people a day. Wow. This trip is going to probably haul about 80. So we, uh, the fuel capacity, the water capacity was just too little for a, a full day now. Right. So while she was capable of running, you were constantly have to stop off. So this way we'll have a bigger tender. We don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Do they still do this on the weekends? Yeah, or? the Golden Gate live streamers operate Sundays 12 to 3. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hey, welcome. All right, let's go watch it go uh, over the trestle. There's some more stuff they got for sale here. Window. All right, and then they got a, a barnyard, I guess. What's the name you'd call that? And we're going to get the optimum spot here, too film the engine that goes over the trestle. I don't know where the optimum spot would be. Maybe standing. This would be a good spot. You can hear it chugging somewhere. Here it comes. miniature Golden Gate Miniature Railroad Club. It's owned and operated by Golden Gate Steam, Live Steam Incorporated. Builds small operated locomotives. 
two and a half, two, three and a half, and seven and a half, and four and three quarter gauges. Basically a place if you're a steam guy, you can come and work on your train and run it on the track. And um, they do give rides on this little tiny track. And look how small that is, it's tiny. And they operate on donations. They're not a, they don't um, charge ticket prices, but they encourage you to donate money for their club. And these guys are 12 to 3 on Sundays. Depending on weather, equipment, availability, I'm not sure with COVID what's going on. But they have a, quite a big facility here. I've been here, and these little green things that look like um, arms are actually they roll their trains out and they can put them on tracks and ride them and test them but a lot of them aren't for riding it's just a giant pretty much like a giant adult train set you see the tracks on the outside those are pretty big toy train tracks what I think is really neat about it is the trains they operate here are real steam trains. And they got a lot of detail. They've done a lot since I've been here. Got these old towns that they're working on. And they got an old real train crossing here. Uh, and over there they got another uh, house they storm in. For you train buffs in the Bay Area that want a, a bang for your buck, uh, definitely come here. And, you know, if you come here on a Sunday, you can get both the best worlds. I'm going to have to come back here on a Sunday and make a separate video. And then here, there's some pictures. And this shows you the size of some of these trains. Tiny, tiny trains that were made by these people, handmade. You see that picture? The glare is really bad, but let's see. And these here. So they've been doing it a long time. And here's some of their rules. All right, let's go ride the train again, this time sit closer to the steam engine. I'm smelling this because they usually put creosote on these things to keep the bugs away. Coming back. <laughs> and it does a loop and comes right back in. <laughs> All right, this is round two. Uh, 
you loop again. See all that red stuff back there? It's all poison oak. Stay away from that stuff.
like that miniature town. Dry Gulf Saloon, Minor Supplies, Silver, or Casino. Built in '85, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, '85. Not 1700s. <laughs> no, no. Not a bald. It's not a bald one. <laughs> yeah. Are they built locally though? Yeah, we build them in our machine shop up on the hill. Really? Yeah, all these builders' places they say River Valley shop. Right there. Oh, you can see it on your side. Wow. Yeah, so that's a River Valley shop, and right up on the hill is where that is. That's really cool. Yeah. So everything's handmade. Yeah, everything you see here was designed and built uh, by everyone who works here. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's all local. And uh, some of the blueprints that were made by the founder have been sold to other people who built them themselves for yeah. their recreation. Are they basically a large engine scaled down? Oh, or? absolutely, yeah. I mean, these are considered uh, the most accurate scale models in the world. Wow, really? Yeah. Do you have any uh, big differences between a smaller one and a bigger one when it scales it down? Uh, the biggest difference is going to be um, how much the boiler pressure changes. Oh, okay. On a smaller boiler, um, adding a little bit of water or cranking up your fire causes a lot of difference in the pressure. Oh, I see. It swings a lot more. Right. When you have a big locomotive, there's more thermal mass right. that keeps the pressure stable. That makes sense. Cool. So here, you know, it's a it's a constant battle making sure I keep the pressure between like a certain ten pounds. And I time. I heard the other guy say he squirts water in that. Does that cool it down? Yeah, when you every time you inject water into a boiler, it, it will bring the pressure down a little bit. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for telling me all that. Yeah, you bet. All aboard! Okay, here we go. All right, they're leaving. Get a wind. One last shot of it leaving. one last time. The big crow just flew by. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that ride with me in Tilden Park on the steam train here in the Berkeley Hills. And if you did, uh, subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please share my channel. Um, I'm trying to grow my channel um, as fast as I can because I do plan on doing this um, for a long time. I really enjoy it. So thanks for coming along on my journey, and I'll see you next time.